we go. Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of Powerful TV. Um, last week we went through No Sacrifice, No Victory, which was pretty fun. That's one of my uh, favorite albums of Hammerfall. And um, this time we'll go through something very, very special. Um, before we go on uh, to that, uh, just please click subscribe on YouTube for us and like the link if you want to, uh, if you're enjoying what you're watching because this helps us tremendously. Uh, it would be great if you do that. Uh, and with that out of the way, um, and it was super, super, super close. We had almost 5,000 votes and uh, Glory to the Brave won with 10 votes. It's ridiculous. I don't even know what, how much, how, how uh, small uh, part of that that is. But uh, uh, so uh, today we're gonna handle this May, uh, this little one, sorry. Yes, here we go. Uh, so that's what we're doing today. And uh, I think because it's uh, the first album, the, the one that's starting the all, I guess you could say, um, I think it's only fitting that um, that we bring up. Uh, let's see if he uh, let's see if he answers. Let's let's um, let's give him a call and see if it's he's here. If he's avail available. Hello. No. <laughs> ah, there we go. Let's see. Hey, you got no sound. Hello. 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 Aha, look who's here. Look who's decided to join the party. Pop I have to turn up your... Um, <clears throat> it's a little delayed on the, my YouTube uh, page here. Wait, wait, wait. Turn you off. How's it going? Uh, fantastic. Uh, until... Uh, wait a second. Uh, no, things are great, actually. Uh, let's see what, why this doesn't work. The way we did a... <laughs> test run earlier and now of course I can't get this one to work the way I want it I want to have let me see here only... can you hear me though I can hear you perfectly yeah for some reason the um, the camera is unavailable in a sense but I, but I was you. actually um... how weird because I can't see you, you know? I... no I, I can't it's, it says it's un unavailable the camera uh <laughs> Weirdly enough, uh, the one that we, the trial run we did earlier, uh, I can't see you now. Now I, I you disappeared. Um. <laughs> okay. Hang on. Where the fuck are you? Oh, there you are. Hello. Uh, there we go. Let's see if I can get you in. Because I can't see you in the program for some reason. It's really strange. I don't see anything, so I'm just uh, following you. Uh, your camera is frozen now, too. Or aren't, aren't you moving? <laughs> no. Uh, let me let me um, call you back and uh, and try again. One second. Okay. Okay. There we are. Let's see if you can see you now. Ah, there we are. I can see you now. It should work. I can see myself, so you should see me too. Yes. But the only I thing can I can see, see now is myself, so I'm fine. <laughs> uh, let's see why this doesn't work like it did before. But yes, yeah, so we're going to talk about Glory to the Brave today. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, you can say that again. So It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> It's just weird. Yeah, I mean, it time flies. Indeed. There we go. So, uh, sorry, I was a bit. Now I can. We can all see. We couldn't see you properly. Now everything is the way it was supposed. To. I don't know why this happened, but uh, luckily I can fix it. So now we're all good. So you're not watching us on um, on. Uh, um, you can't see the 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 stream now. Well, I can see the stream, but the stream is kind of a little bit uh, delayed, I think, from... Ah, yes, I'm with Hammerfall. And we needed a singer. And um, 
we didn't have a singer. Mika Sane was our, our original singer and he couldn't do it. So we wanted to have somebody who could fill his shoes and, and then some. Uh, and uh, was it Peter Ivers who gave us your number? Do you remember? No, it was, um, I'm not really sure who gave it to you, but it was Jesper who called me in the first place. Yeah, 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 uh, Jesper called you. I well, it he, might have been P Peter actually who gave it to, to him. Yeah, because you, you guys knew each other and played in the same band for a while, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We played for for a couple of months together in Mississippi. Right, that, yeah, that's cool. So, um, kind of funny thing when uh, when Jesper called me and, uh, you know, he told me all about, you know, Hammerfall and... I said, hey, you know what? I don't ha have anything else planned, so let's do it. But then he didn't call back for a couple of weeks. And the closer it got to the uh, the show, I thought, oh, this is not going to happen. This is not happening, you know. But then eventually the mailman came with the uh, <laughs> a little letter and a, like a cassette with three songs recorded live in a... I don't know if it was <clears throat> just from the, the, the mixing console or... Yes. Someone's Walkman. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So what songs was it? Was was it from the, the Rock Solid concert the year before, or what was it? I don't remember. No, it was. I think it was from the uh, the, the the show you did prior to the one I was. All oh, right, right, to. okay. Yes. Unchained, Steel Meets Steel, and uh, was it Red Hot and Heavy? I think Breaking the Law. I, I we were playing that one in '96. Mm, I have it still somewhere. I should, you know, maybe nope. I should upload it. Ah, <laughs> please don't. That's a very good idea. People. <laughs> <laughs> no, please don't. But yeah, uh, yeah. so so uh, this was a tape from the mixing console. I'm not sure if it was from the '95 show or the '96 show, but whatever it was, it was straight from the console. It sounded absolutely horrible. I'm surprised you agreed to uh, <laughs> to come sing with us when you when you heard that. Well, the, the hard part was to uh, can you learn the songs? Like when you listen back to it, if you listen back to it now, the melodies were a little unclear. <laughs> to put, put it mildly, yeah. so uh, it was open for a lot of uh, imp improvisations from from uh, and creativity from my side. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it was very rough. Things were really rough in the beginning. I guess it's uh, just the way they were. Uh, but uh, so you you uh, studied some songs, and then we met in the rehearsal room uh, mm -hmm. in Mandal. To play so we probably didn't rehearse more than once or twice then if it was so late close to the the show time right oh. yeah i was thinking about that yesterday when uh decision the decision came to talk about this album and i think i think i was there once might have been twice but mm, it's like a 50 50 chance we actually re rehearsed twice oh, wow. uh, i think i was so well prepared anyways for, for the songs and you guys you played the same songs over and over again for three years so you you knew the songs, yeah, that's true. So I just had to follow. True, we didn't have. But that I'm still on. We that played time. two or three songs. Um, I think we played Unchained and Steel Meets Steel. Um, ah, and, and then, Hammerfall. Uh, the, the and the version, the old version of Hammerfall. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, that's right. And we did that one too. That's true. I forgot about that. Yeah, but that was the the version of Hammerfall that the, the parts of the song later became immortalized. Yes. 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 That's correct. Okay, so that's, that's true. And uh, those parts actually came from a ceremonial oath song that I wrote, like, for, for um, before I, wrote, I left that band, I wrote a song with Jesper, actually, called Immortalized, with these parts mm. in it, and then uh, some other stuff took place. Uh, Don't and you think everyone want to hear that? Like, do you have a demo from, from that version? No, that so version, that they recorded it again for, for uh, like, a demo... For, and the, uh, they put together a couple of demos for the Carpet album uh, okay. that they released in 95 or 96. And that song is actually on there. And you, mm. you know, people can go check it out in uh, Ceremonial Old Carpet, uh, in, okay. uh, Immortalized. Cool. That's the song we're talking about. Uh, and it's on, uh, on Spotify. I guess that it's available there, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah otherwise it's on YouTube, so yes. no, <laughs> no problem. Uh, so, yeah, so anyway, we rehearsed. Um, it was pretty cool I mean this is a story we told many many times but I love it I want to tell it again uh, when, when uh, because I was in the rehearsal room when you walked in I guess yes or somebody picked you up at the tra tram station probably right yes some yeah someone picked me up and we, we took a walk over to the, the church area in, in Mölndal where you had your rehearsal room and what? Uh, of course I was a bit nervous you know <laughs> yeah. coming there like new guys you know like kind of death metal guys and Jesper when he called me like Hey, it's Jesper. 
he was not really well he was very positive but he was not really talking that much so i was like what the hell is going on here yeah, yeah. Let, let's give it a shot but it's so funny as soon as i opened the door and kind of you know stairs go down to the basement i heard uh, uh, like a, a little melody played on the guitar and like shit i know this melody so i walked down and i I saw a guy standing there with his guitar playing, and I looked at him, and I pointed at him, said, Dorian Gray, Stormwitch. And the dude, that was actually Oscar Droniak, uh, you know, he, his jaw dropped to the floor. Yeah. Totally, totally. Yeah, like, Do works. you know Stormwitch? Oh, yeah, I love Stormwitch. Do you have this album? I got all the albums. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that was yeah, incredible. But... I remember this so well, because that was the first time that I found somebody like-minded, that I actually liked the, the same type. I mean, Stormwitch was absolutely one of my main bands together with Accept and Judas Priest. And for me, that's that's the three big ones in terms of songwriting, at least. Yeah, they had, they had two fans in, in the Gothenburg area, yeah. you and me. Yeah, well, they had a couple more, I think, but not that many. I mean, people, in those days, people didn't really want to admit that they liked. I mean, remember one thing, we played, uh, I, I played, this was like five years earlier or something, around the, the turn of the decade there, like 1990 or something like that. And we had a New Year's Eve party, discovered Warlord. Uh, I was mm -hmm. so happy. I thought it was, I, I didn't know that this, that such great music was, that, had, that had, uh, such great music had been done and I didn't know about it. And I put on Child of the Damned, I think, or, or Deliver Us, maybe I don't remember which song it was. And uh, all the cool death metal guys, because I was playing death metal guys and hanging out with them back then, they were all like, oh, no, turn that shit off, uh, boo. <laughs> and so and that was the world I was living in uh, until I met you, basically. <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, dared they were supposed to, to react like that. I mean, they were they were listening to, like, Kate Bush, where no one, you know, were, were looking. So, yeah. you, I mean, they love this form of music. And without, you know, these bands, I mean, the death metal genre, especially from, from God, the Gothenburg version of death metal would never sound the way, you know, it did and still does. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right with that. And it's funny how when people who, are, who were our age back then, like they were so uh, strict. I was this like this too, but not with, with the heavy metal. But uh, they, they, like 10, 10, 15 years later, the circle has come to a close. So they're back when they, where they started, when they were kids again, like listening to the same music and influ getting influenced by that same music again. So I, I guess that's yeah. just the way of, of the world. Exactly. Um, exactly. So... Let's uh, move on. We we did this show with you, which was actually mm -hmm. a competition, a music competition called Rock Slaget here in Gothenburg. And uh, well, it was a, was it semifinals? It was a semifinals. Yeah, it was. Right. It was. And we did not advance to the finals. I thought we should have, but uh, we didn't. But um, I think what, still, you know, still, if you look at, if you go back and you look, I have still a tour poster for the semifinals right, when we played. Right. There was a lot of, you know, big bands playing there that became really, you know, well known in, in, in Sweden. So, uh, absolutely. you know, the competition was really hard. Yeah. I mean, Rock Slogget, people don't, uh, people outside of Gothenburg or, or uh, the West Coast of Sweden don't know what that is, but it was a, a chance for young up and coming bands to perform like only three songs we, we could do a, 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 a big show even for us it was big and it, it yeah. felt like professional yeah. uh, uh, yeah. far from and professional is the word that you had like professional professional circumstances from you know on every point on every you know from the sound to the light to the sound engineer to the well the monitor guys they always sucked anyways but who, who cares so. <laughs> okay. but you had three songs really to 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 prove yourself and that's really hard because usually it takes three songs, at least nowadays, to uh, you know get into the groove. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah, I think we just came up there. This was in 1996, and we played a form of music that, well, you know, people, yeah, you know, it's fun. They were laughing a little bit, and you know, it's cool to see. Yeah, that's that's the way it was. We we uh, played the music that we wanted to play because or listen to because nobody else was listening to it, right? Or, I mean, yeah. sorry, nobody else was playing it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, this uh, show that we did, uh, only three songs, but I believe one and a half of them were captured on film. By yeah, someone's girlfriend, uh, what's, what's his name? Pierre, Pierre yes, or something. Exactly, from, yeah, from Fredrick's, yeah. Fredrick's uh, buddy uh, was also playing, 
in the same uh, on the same um, concert as we were, mm -hmm. and his girlfriend filmed them, and then they had a little bit of tape left because this was in the no. in the days of the VHS. I, you know, I think the true story, the real story here, is that she they gave her the the camera and okay. told her like you know get to know the you know. Uh, get to know the camera while the hammer guys are playing so you can yeah, I've never heard that before that's a uh, news to me but that sounds plausible you know because the video yeah. cameras back then were like this big you know they were half 50 centimeters big and thick like uh, like um, I don't know what to compare it to but it, there was really big stuff that, that was heavy to carry on your shoulders well you had to be there to to understand you know yeah, I guess you can't so. really yeah. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> funny thing is that also when the uh, not develop the film no when they uh, you know look back at it and they gave us uh, like a vhs tape of one and a half song they could have just you know kept it on there or just deleted it but of course they hey let's make a copy and give it to the guys yeah now, i mean that wouldn't and have happened if frederick wasn't a friend of theirs you know they, then he wouldn't have gotten it I, I don't think so that that one and a half song led to uh, us getting a record deal actually in the beginning yeah just imagine if, and the thing is, we were not even supposed to play at that semifinal. We were supposed to play on the other one. True. But I said, no, I cannot do that because that is the day after my sister turns 30. She's going to have a party. And the day after I've been drinking, I can't sing. So if you want me to sing for you guys, we have to do it the, the weekend. Was it like the week after or no, it was actually the two day days before. in a row? The, the day before, final. yeah, yeah, on the Saturday, we had to do it on Saturday because Saturday was the party, yeah. and I cannot sing on Sunday, no yeah. chance. That's what it was. And yeah. so, they, I, they we had to thank my sister, <laughs> yeah. Well, they were good enough for uh, to let us do that too. I mean, they had a, a set schedule, but uh, I don't know, who, I, don't, I have no idea who uh, uh, who called them, but I probably Jesper, uh, I'm guessing, <laughs> probably wasn't yeah, me anyway. I don't know. Yeah. Do you remember the date? Was it 11 and 12? Of May? Yeah, May 11th, we played. That yes. I do remember. Uh, well, yeah. it's, it's e very easy to, to remember since it's my... my <laughs> <laughs> don't tell her. <laughs> Should never reveal a, a young lady's age. No, that's true. Uh, but, <laughs> yes, well, you're not a young lady, but okay. I'm a lady, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How do ladies think? Uh, so, um, this uh, record deal was with Vic Records. We recorded the album. Uh, we went to uh, Fred Nordstrom again. What, I don't know, was that ever a deal? Marks. Yes. Yeah, 37,000 uh, Swedish, if I remember correctly. I think we ended up just over 40,000 Swedish, but oh. let's say around 10,000 Deutschmarks. And that was including everything. And, you know, we didn't really know, you know, okay, it's money, what can we do with this? And since you knew Frederick from your uh, ceremonial old days, I think it was, you know, and, and yeah, Jesper, of course, yeah. from In Flames, I think was uh, so passionate in, you know, in building his reputation and his, uh, you know, building up the studio. Yeah, but Frederick has always been like that. Uh, he's always been accommodating. If, if you don't have a big budget, he always makes it work somehow anyway. Uh, yeah, that's what everyone does these days, you know. You, yeah. you get money from the big bands, and then, of course, you can, you're kind of a record label. They yeah. sell 10 million albums with one band and they lose money on 10 others. Yeah. yeah but without right. this big seller, they cannot invest money in the bands that doesn't, you know, that, that don't sell, but still they're needed. That, yeah, that's true. Uh, so how, do you remember how many days we had? I don't know. I think I, I, I nailed the vocals in two days. Did and we spend what? like 10 days? No, I think we had 17 days or 16 and a half actually, because the half was the uh, the night when we, before we were supposed to start mixing. That you were singing late, very very late one night because we didn't finish everything in time. Oh, I remember this. So we got a lot of value for the money spent, I would say. Yeah, if oh for sure. We 17 did. days, is that true? I'm uh, pretty sure. Okay. Uh, the, the, I don't know. I, I know that uh, I recorded Crystal Age before in Studio Film and also for the same label. And that we had, uh, that, no, sorry, then we had 10 and a half days. That's true. So we had a couple more for Hammerfall. Uh, I don't maybe, know how many. You more. know what? I think we had 14 in the, in the end, maybe 15. Let, that rings a bell. I can't really check the calendar because the, 
internet was not really there back then. <laughs> but but the yeah, smartphone, the let's, smartphone. let's say that uh, Frederick gave us 14 days for the money that we had and then yeah. gave us another two and a half days maybe just because he was we didn't have any more money but we wanted to finish the album. That Could that sound right? Yeah, I think we can, can agree on that and uh, we needed maybe some more time to uh, lay down some uh, backing vocals, some, some additional stuff on there. And, uh, yeah. And of course, the mixing was really, you know, different back then because nothing was automated. We, you know, we were standing there. We had like a, a couple of channels each. Yeah, I remember. Okay, that. after the solo, you you fly with you know this channel up there. You take down the the reverb, turn the delay on, and mute the bass. It's like, oh shit, am I supposed to do all that? <laughs> yes. Okay. And all the fades, like the fading glory to the ray, for example, had to be done manually. So mm -hmm. if you uh fade it too fast you had to do the whole song again and wait for the end and then fade it properly there was no uh, computerized fades as it is today you just put it in oh there was no it was too fast of a fade then control yeah. z boom and then you redo it again it's so much much, much easier these things today than they were back I'm then i'm just uh, happy that we, i think we're fortunate to be um, that we were able to to uh to be around in those days, you know, before the computers came. Because yeah. now, th like the mixing part is, is so much easier and simpler. But still, of course, you know, mixing an album, you, you need to, uh, I mean, you know, w with the faders and all that. Well, yeah. In the end, all, all you still have to have your ears, of course. But of the, course, the, the of actual course. process is, it's, uh, they have facilitated the process a lot uh, with, with these things. but. If you if you don't have the ears, you can't mix anyway. So it doesn't matter how great of equipment you have, right? So do you know? Do, do you remember the most popular dish that we ate during <laughs> the recordings? Uh, sugerkrulle. No, that was uh, later. We didn't, you know, we couldn't afford sugerkrulle <laughs> that often. Now uh, then pizza, I guess, right or what? Yeah, Billy's pan pizza. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I remember those. Uh, yes. I think I found like a. Like a, a, huge a, a huge bag of bag. Like 20 pizzas and I just oh. shoved it in the, the small yeah. freezer. That's true. Ha, I had forgotten about that. <laughs> but yeah, that's, we ate a lot of those yeah. back in those days. So uh, when the recording was finished, what was how was your feeling then? You know, how, how did you feel about the final result? Could you uh, appreciate it right away? Or, cause it, was I'm it a so, singer. Was it I'm a singer. It takes... Yeah, it was my first album. I, I kind of gave up on the whole, you know, rock and roll idea. I was 26 years old. I had a job. I was really, you know, I was happy with my job. And I, I tried with so many bands, nothing happened. So it was kind of like, eh, you know, if this doesn't work, I'm, I'm ready to give up this dream. Wow. So when the, the album was done, I couldn't really, it's always, you know, when, when you're done with something, you listen back to it, you know, it sounds good, but there's always one thing that bugs me one thing that really bothers me and that's me singing <laughs> yeah. i can't really you know get around that it's my voice yeah. and that takes down the overall picture so uh that's why i always said in my next life i'm going to play the bass <laughs> so i can play yeah, right. hard and yeah. i can you know i think especially on the, on the dominion uh, you can definitely hear what he's doing yeah but no one is, is using a, a hi-fi anymore no are, yeah, that's true. Like MP3 uh, bullshit. Yeah. No, but it's. Uh, I think we pretty soon we understood that we have uh, you know created something really unique. Uh, we had a mutual friend. You remember him, uh, John Love, an Adler. Oh shit! You were, yes. You were studying with him at, at the, the university, and I played with him in a, like a, a progressive band, like an art rock band. What was the name called, of the band? Uh, Altair. Yeah, right. Altair. Oh, Altair, yes, Altair. Altair. Yeah, and we played together. That didn't really work. And then you studied like history with him or English. I'm not really sure. But you gave him a tape. Yeah. And he, the review he gave you, it was not. It was pretty short. But he said, you know what? This is kind of an A product. This is a real product. Like this is not a demo band or anything right, right, like right. that. This is, you know, the the real deal. And that meant a lot. And from there, like, oh shit, maybe yeah. he's up to something, you know, he's onto something here. And I played it to a couple of friends and they like, what, what's going on here? This sounds amazing. And like, oh, thank you. Yeah, it, it was uh, kind of, 
an eye opener a little bit. I I I remember talking to Jesper afterwards after the recordings, and both of us like, how how is how does this sound so good? Is this really Hammerfall? Can this be us doing this? Because it sounds so so professional, like we've done nothing else our whole lives, and then play heavy metal, which of course was true. Probably in not. Maybe it was the 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 early days of Doctor Midnight. Came <laughs> yeah. In and fixed yeah. Who things. knows? What, what? When the band leaves the studio at midnight, Doctor Midnight <laughs> enters. Who knows what Ferry was up to back then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah. No, no it, it's uh, it was an, a, a really good recording. I think uh, it showed a lot of promise, and it wasn't. Um, what, what it wasn't. I mean, your friend or our mutual friend was onto something, and he was just uh, saying what other people said along the way afterwards. Like for example, Jesper gave the take to somebody in Mutual Blast when they were on tour with In Flames. Yeah. Uh, then it ended up on a real sort of, I mean, so, so to speak, real label, independent record label still, but one of the bigger independents even back then, I think. Yeah, absolutely. They were, they were, you know, starting to grow, and in the uh, kind of indie business, they were the label for kind of more of extreme heavy metal. Yeah. Or extreme metal, I would say. Yeah, that's true. A funny thing is, no one else at the label believed in this, apart from the. The, the label boss himself, Mr. Marcus Steiger. But, but the, that's what we believed for years and years. Uh, that's what Marcus yeah. wanted us to believe. But um, yeah, that's what he, he always says. Yes, that's me. what he says. <laughs> but according to somebody who works for him, or worked for him, I should say, uh, back then, uh, it was it took a little bit of convincing, I heard. Mm. I don't remember who said that now, but uh, we have to get deeper into this. But that's, I, that's something that came just to like recently, very recently, last Two years maybe or something like that um you know after a success like like this album it's easy to kind of you know come back and say no 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 i i, I believe in this album yeah, of course you know i did i well, did on some level he did of course you know he, he obviously believed in the album enough to uh, to sign us and I, according to the faxes that he sent us both of us he was uh ecstatic about the the, uh, the songs and the album so i'm sure it, he uh he uh, didn't fake that, of course not. He he really was believing in us, uh, and I, yeah. I think that showed also in the, the amount of promotion and the amount of um, of uh, push that they gave the first album, like a debut album, a music style that's been out for years. That mm -hmm. not, maybe not so much in Germany. And this is a German label, so Germans have a. Uh, they were. I didn't know there were so many metalheads, like heavy metal fans, still in Germany at that time. Tours in an, in and around Germany. During yeah. those years, yeah, I mean, keep in mind that Gamma Ray released one of their best albums in this time. Ninety-five. Land of the oh my God, what yeah. a great album! Yeah, I remember. Didn't that album come out? No, it didn't come out. It came out in ninety-five, but we listened to it a lot. In was it Stefan who drove us to maybe a, a video uh, a shoot or something? We mm -hmm. listened to that album, or or. Yeah, that one and uh, Time of the Oath, the Halloween album. Oh yeah, he played Time of the Oath yeah. over and over and over again. And I never yeah. got into that album. I was more uh, Gamma Ray. Right. I, I love that album, but uh, the Land of the Free, I think, uh, came from Glenn, actually. Um, now that I remember it. Yeah, it was Glenn, who, at least who introduced it to me. Uh, I had never heard that before. And this was, of course, uh, one year before uh, for a menu the first time. Mm. Glenn. Glenn, yeah. You know, so, last um, name Dale. Glenn Dale. <laughs> well, um, so can you watch the, the live feed now for a little bit? Well, I can, but it's kind of, if I start it now, it's going to be the last week's program. I would like to have your reaction on a photo. Oh, okay. Uh, I wonder if it's, I should go YouTube or Facebook. Try Facebook. Uh, and, uh, you know, talking about this, uh, the, the deal when we got we, the deal with Nuclear Blast. Oh, yeah. They, uh, okay, last name Dale, I was saying here now, so it's going to take a little while. Okay. Uh, and, uh, ooh, this doesn't work at all. Uh, turn okay, off show the, sound. the photo. Turn off the sound. You don't need the sound on the, on the uh, Facebook page. Ah. Can you hear me? Yeah. No. Yes, I can. Okay. Yeah, but I couldn't hear anything. Wait, I'm very positive it's gonna sell a thousand. Oh, are you talking? No, I'm not oh, saying no, anything. shit, sorry. I'm okay, oh, no. And uh, 
yeah, it's, you know, I'm, I'm very positive it's going to sell a couple of thousand albums. Like, wow, cool. But they, they wanted to buy the whole product from him. And he's like, okay, what? And they gave him a number, uh, how much they wanted to pay for it. And, and after that, he said, with all the lawyers involved and all that, he kind of gave up the whole dream about, you know, having a, a label. So he put his label to rest for a long, long time after this. He got too big. He didn't want to do it anymore. Wow. But I then he came that. back. Then he came back. Yeah, yeah, that I know. Uh, yeah. But I didn't know this was the reason. That's interesting. Yeah, Nuclear Blast, they p paid us out. They paid a lot of money. And in the end, they used our money. So we never actually saw any money from that out. Exactly. That's oh. how it works, though. You know, all the advances you get Sorry. are just advances on, on uh, royalties that you're going to earn later. So we basically bought ourselves in that those times, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm gonna turn, put this put picture up now, and I would like to see your reaction. It's gonna come up in a few seconds. I don't know how long the delay is, maybe 30, 30 seconds or so. Uh, but this, I found this uh, when I was looking through some photos earlier today. Uh, it's a pretty, oh yeah, it's a pretty oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, five bumps bumps on a pork bench. Was that and after food. the show? That was I, I don't know. No, this, this is uh, taken on that day. I think it's after the show because I still have my stage boots on. Yeah, but I think maybe you actually uh, went there in your stage boots. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, maybe. <laughs> yeah. You never know. But this is still uh, Flum's Oz Park, and, and I didn't really have those clothes on. I think I borrowed Frederick's leather jacket for the show. Uh, yeah, I think so. Shit, we were young. Jesper looks so young. Yeah. We all look, oh, really you look really even young, younger. But those were the days. <laughs> Look at Frederick. You can't, you can't see his face, but he looks pretty funny with that. Uh, he has a little beard just on the on the tip of his uh, chin, nothing on the sides. <laughs> he had that. I kind of go time. goatee. Yeah. Well, well I didn't, didn't have, have a beard anything. at all, but I had sideburns. I guess you did it for a long time, yeah. right? Yeah. It's kind of funny if you look at Jesper. He's holding a plastic bag, and yeah. th that is referred to as a, like a symbol case for Hammer for the first two years <laughs> when Patrick came into the band yeah. already for you know recording the uh, the drums for the album he uh, he didn't have any cymbals so he had to borrow cymbals from a friend to use in the studio and he came with you know a plastic bag filled with cymbals yeah. and he also used the not the same plastic bag but when we went on tour <laughs> in Europe first tour yeah you're not gone yeah, but now it's uh, this horrible you're freezing. Uh, what, well, me? I'm freezing? But uh, yeah, can the, you uh, see uh, the picture I put up now? Yeah, I can see parts of it. It's very big. I see you in the middle, but I can't, I can't see your, your head. I see. But yeah, it's the, the first, uh, the photo shoot. Yes. The photo shoot from uh, Per Stolfors. <laughs> exactly. I just released an album today with a band called Oxidized. Oxidized. <laughs> really? So, so can you see, does this look good now? Like you can see all the different members and the logo? No, no, no it's, uh, it's, it's really big. The photo is really big. Oh, because it looks good over here. So, okay, so I, I'm going to, that's good that you mentioned that because you know, I'll take that out then. Oh, wait, wait. Ah, uh, no, sorry. No, no, it's good. It's perfect. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, did, I did zoom in. I did uh -huh. zoom in. All right. Yeah. And if you look here, I think, yeah. Me and Frederick were wearing the same jacket. Uh, <laughs> yes. What happened here? And uh, maybe Glenn player. also. Now player popped out. Okay, now I'm back here. Uh, Glenn. No, he's using his own, but I'm not sure with Jesper and Patrick because Patrick, same deal, like with the cymbals and the drums. You have to, you know, give Patrick stuff to <laughs> put this on and do this, do that. Yeah. I was like his father sometimes. <laughs> His yeah. mom called me like, hi, it's uh, Patrick's mom. Uh, are you going on tour soon? Yeah, I'm going to pick Patrick up tomorrow morning at five. Oh my God, good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> he never told her anything. So I, then I called her, you know what? I'm going to pick Patrick up on Monday at seven in the morning. Okay, where are you going? Well, we're going to North America for six weeks. Like, what? <laughs> Didn't say anything. <laughs> 
a typical him. So why is this one showing now? Uh, anyway, so um, there we go. There. Um, if you have, uh, could you do me a favor and uh, uh, talk about some great memories from or like a good memory or something that you have? Because I need to go and take a piss. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a long memory. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, I I'm, I can be quick with that. Um, but uh, I'm gonna, you're gonna go outside. You're gonna go outside. Yes. Then, then I can talk about you. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to put you on full screen here for a second. Uh, so now it's yep. all you. All right. Okay, cool. I'll be yep. back in a second. I'm not really sure what to talk about, but uh, I still see Oscar in the picture. That's because it's a delay here. Uh, you, can, you know, people ask many times, like, why is there a picture of, of Jesper in the booklet and who's playing drums on the album? And uh, we had a discussion together with Jesper and said, since we all had a feeling that, you know, the, the, the Glory to the Brave album would be something extraordinary, they, it could be something very, very special. We want to, you know, make it as good as possible on every, you know, on every part. Uh, so therefore, Jesper said, you know what, let's try and find another drummer who could do the drum parts. And maybe I can just, you know, be part and play some guitar solos, but still be part of the band. So, um, I think we called a couple of people, but I had uh, played with Patrick, you know, for a couple of months in the band called Highlander that later became Lost Horizon. And I, you know, I knew he was, a, you know, a very great and, and sturdy uh, drummer. So uh, I called him up and he was not that enthusiastic. He, he just actually wanted to sit home and play video games, you know, Nintendo. Uh, back then, but yeah, okay, you know, let's do it. But I think that, you know, by inviting Patrick to play on the album, I think his drumming really made this album something special. Because if you, if you listen back to it, he's, you know, on the beat, he's really kind of, everyone is chasing him. He's He, he took the lead on the drums. Even though we didn't rehearse that much, he, he just came in there and he did his thing. And I would say that his performance on the glory to the brave album is fucking awesome fucking awesome welcome, welcome back oscar yes that was a great was, memory yeah i was talking about patrick because yeah. I, I, I want to give him some credit for the drumming on the debut album yeah i heard uh, uh not everything but the last part i heard only didn't hear all the bad things you said about me i know so. i didn't get there so i think you need <laughs> to get, go to the bathroom in five minutes anyways <laughs> that's good I, can, I thought you were gonna drink champagne today so, um, no. I have no, a took glass care. here. Ah, Flip's Blue, okay. So I'm going to put my glass away. But anyway. Um, uh, okay, now I only had uh, one Flip's Blue. Okay. And I, I don't want to open up a full bottle of champagne today. Maybe I do. Oh, you have champagne? I had a, 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 it's actually Prosecco, but yes. Yeah, then I will not open my champagne. Because <laughs> no. <laughs> never toast with champagne and Prosecco. Like, that's, that's a uh, no-no. <laughs> Okay, I'll remember that. Uh, yeah. But all right, so uh, I'm going to get started on the riffing, I think, a little bit now. You better. I've been talking with you for 40 minutes. I know. We talked for, for a full show, <laughs> but I'm going to make that, uh, just get back to it, because i got some stuff to say about the the, the instrument as, as well, because I found my old guitar. I don't know if you remember that one, but I found it. Uh, <laughs> it's in pretty bad shape, but you remember the, the Ibanez? Black, yeah, mm -hmm. that random mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's gonna come out in a second. So, but um, in the meantime, uh, thank you very much. It's really, really fun. It felt really, really cool to talk. I learned some things too. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and uh, well, thank you guys. Thank you people for, for watching. I'm out of here and uh, I'm gonna join you. I might write some uh, profanities in the, uh, whatever you call it, on the side chat. Ch 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 okay. Bro. Yeah, that's right. Comments. So, <laughs> cheers. All right. See you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay. So let's get down to business now. But let's get to the, the riffing. Because I've um, got some really interesting things to go through here today. Uh, first of all, I want you to see this. This is my old guitar case um, with a bunch of stickers on it. 
This one is a guitar that I bought in 1989. Uh, it's not in great shape, unfortunately, today. Uh, it works, but um, I have to make some concessions. But this is a guitar I recorded um, both the Crystal Age album I was referring to earlier and the first Hammerfall album, Glory to the Brave. It's an Ibanez Red Rhodes uh, model. Uh, it's actually, I haven't looked at this guitar in I don't know how long. Uh, and it was, I, I had to change the batteries for the, the pickups and stuff. But um, it doesn't sound all bad, you know? It sounds, I guess it's uh, the little, little bastard over here that makes it, but um, the uh, uh, the amp makes everything sound great. Here we go. Let's see if we got the sound. Yeah. All right. So yeah, like I said, it needs some love, but I think I don't think you'll be able to hear that shit when I'm playing. <laughs> yes, getting flame stick. Oops. Let's see. Let's see how long we can do. Yeah. So oh, another thing. This uh, guitar has only five strings. There's missing one. I um, these. This is a really weird, uh, really weird uh, uh, thing. They got normal screws here, but they are both rusty and worn out. So I don't know. I, I couldn't get it uh, get one to open. Uh, so I couldn't change the, the strings. I was going to do that before, but but um, it didn't work. So anyway, let's get down to business with this one. First song. <laughs> song sometimes to warm up actually to uh before the shows just to get the uh especially after an off day just to get the uh uh the right hand going a little bit uh it's very good for that um so this is gonna uh, go a little bit faster now i'm gonna try to get through some songs uh because we're all, all uh, been online for 48 minutes already so next one first song that i ever wrote for hammerfall or actually first song i ever wrote uh, that was in hammerfall i wrote it for ceremonial oath but uh, I never introduced it to the guys, and then I left the band after a disagreement. So um, I uh, and besides, I mean, this song would have sounded weird in the, in a death metal setting anyway. I think. But here it is, the uh, uh, original Hammerfall song, if you will. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, not 100%, but pretty sure. So uh, this little uh, little guy uh, comes out again today. Uh, he can he can make anything sound great. Uh, so anyway, yes, here we go. Number three. Somebody said that this is their favorite song. I read, read, read in comments earlier, so hopefully they will enjoy this. 
Stefan only played on one song on the first album, and that was I Believe, which was a ballad co written together with, let's see, Peter, no, Peter Stolfors, who is the bass player of, of uh, Dream Eagle, who didn't exist back then, of course, and Joachim, of course. So, um, uh, 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 and that song was all about, uh, uh, you know, acoustic bling bling blinks, which uh, neither Glenn and I or I was comfortable with. So, uh, uh, and Joachim always the. <laughs> Thinking ahead, um, he called Stefan and asked him, can you play this? Yeah, sure, no problem, I can do that. And then he played the solo as well, uh, on Bora Korten, from his area in Um Let's see, number four. Uh, this is, uh, I actually don't, didn't remember which song that was. Uh, this is uh, a song that we did play live many times over the years, uh, especially on the last tour we played. Did we play the whole song? Yeah, I think maybe, maybe we did. Or parts of it at least in the medley. No, we play the whole song. Yeah. All right. Never mind. <laughs> one this was the second one that we wrote and um, uh, Joaquin was singing steel is steel and unchained on the first show that we were talking about earlier so um, yeah th this must have been the second song we did a version of Hammerfall as we also was, was talking about and that may have been the first one but I, I think this was the second one anyway unchained <laughs> Thank you. 
not riff. That's uh, yeah. Don't remember who wrote that one, but I love that one that comes after this. But we're not gonna play that. Yes, brothers in arms are fighting tonight. Sure, damn sure. So we got one more song to do. Uh, let's see. I'm just gonna see if I I missed something before. Um, yeah, uh, I was gonna say this guitar cost me. 150 euros, which is about 150 dollars, in uh, 1989. In, it was used uh, in a store, and this was my dream guitar at that time. Uh, it was a dream shape for me. I didn't know about brands and stuff. I didn't care. Uh, I, all I knew, knew was. <laughs> This was never on tour either. I, I recorded the album with it, and then for the tour, I bought a um, uh, blue, maybe same same um, shape, but a blue, put on the shelf for a long while, and I don't ever re recall using it again, like for for anything official. Just you know, maybe playing for for fun, but not on stage or in the studio af after that. So. Um, Probably the strings are most likely more than 20 years old, which is incredible that they held up. Uh, and it sounded actually didn't sound bad, you know, it sounded pretty good. Um, I, I'm very surprised at that. Um, so uh, I think that's it for us today. We, uh, we still kept it under an hour, which is okay, I guess. Um, yes, I got some stuff I need to talk about before. Yes, sorry about that. I have more stuff to talk about. So, of course, we do need to do some plugs at the end. There's more coming after this, so you know, don't tune out just yet. We got some uh, stuff at the web shop. Um, this, I, I uh, plugged this last week. This is a vinyl bundle uh, with the uh, Dominion album in a tour vinyl on our web shop. This is all, the only place you can buy this exact version right now. And the tour shirt, of course, in case you missed it on the, on the tour that we did uh, uh, for Dominion in Europe just last week. The web shop you found found find here at hammerfulnet.net at uh, slash merchandise as usual. Um, there we go with that. So now, uh, as many of you remember, maybe um, two years ago. Holy shit! Metal Crusader six 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 says. Yes, the guitar was blue. I remember it from Dynamo Open Air. How the hell can you remember that? Even I don't remember what guitar I used. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're, you're most likely right. So that's very cool. Very cool. Um, uh, yeah, so where was I? Yes. So Glory to the Rave had its uh, 20th, anni 20th anniversary uh, three years ago. We released a 20th anniversary edition, which was a bunch of stuff, like a lot of shit that we put, everything we could find, basically, we put in there. Um, and uh, uh, then all, we also did some some uh, interviews uh, uh, for for a, like a bon DVD bonus uh, disc or something like that. Uh, and they were also the, of course done uh, in '97 with as many of the mem the original members as we could find. Uh, Jesper was supposed to be there, uh, unfortunately he had to back out at the last minute. But everybody else was there, and also very cool drum. So. This is what we looked like back then. 
Oh, Patrick wasn't there. Well, he was that. Pat, okay, so let me clear this up once and for all. Patrick was actually not a member of Hammerfall. See, when we were recording the album, Glory to the Brave, he was as a, as a, enlisted as a session drummer for the album because we never had any dreams. We didn't think it was going to take off. Jesper said, if we're going to make this album sound as good as possible, we should probably have a, a proper drummer on there. So yes, we got Patrick, uh, through Joachim of course, because he had played in, with him before, as you said. But the idea was never to to um, to have Patrick as, as a, a, the, the drummer for Hammerfall, because we didn't think that there was going to be any any uh, anybody interested I enough, you know, to to uh, to, uh, um, to keep going. Uh, and then once we realized that yes, oh yes, oh fuck yes, people are interested, and we have a, a, a interest from Nickel Bass now. Um, then we decided that uh, because Joachim and I only had Hammerfall, the other guys had other bands. So Joachim and I only had Hammerfall, and so we said, okay, we're gonna give it one more shot. You know, let's let's see if we can make it. We got a really good foundation here. Uh, but everybody who is in the band playing has to have Hammerfall as their main priority. Uh, and of course, Jesper and Glenn had in flames, no problem. We knew, they, oh, kind of knew that they were gonna gonna go with that anyway, because in flames was really up and coming at this time. And uh, Frederick said, I want to play thrash metal with, um, I believe they were called Beyond then, a band. Uh, then they changed the name to None, as far as, far as I remember anyway. It might be the other way around, but I don't think so. Um, so we had to find three Novembers. Of course, Patrick, easy choice. He already knew all the songs, played, played on all of them. Uh, he was willing to, to step in. Stefan was also another obvious choice, because he's a fantastic guitar player, and, and he also we knew him um he, he fit well into the, the the setting so to speak he, and uh, uh it was an obvious choice bass player was much more difficult we couldn't find anybody uh frederick said i'll play along until you find somebody basically so that's why frederick is in in the, the videos the promotion videos for glory to the brave and hammerfall which we recorded over one weekend in mura uh, probably may also 97 i'm guessing uh, something like that anyway um, and then right after that we found Magnus uh, so and then the, the sort of the, the classic Hammerfall lineup was complete at that point um, but that's that's the way it was uh, and that's the way it is and that's how the cookie crumbles so anyway <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today uh, I had a blast it was really fun talking to Joachim I'm hoping uh, that he can be, be a part of, of the future broadcast like this um, Anyway, thank you for watching and for listening and for tuning in. Uh, next week, we're going to do another album. What it's going to be, I don't know yet. We'll see. Um, I got an idea of what songs to choose from, but uh, please go ahead and uh, check uh, uh, check our, our uh, Facebook and Twitter and, and our social media. I forgot about that. Oh, oops. They changed that one. That one. That's right. Uh, um, so go to uh, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. That's where we post the the polls usually uh for for the songs i mean for the albums that you can choose from for next week uh and be sure that we will return next week absolutely 100 percent sure um so for this week uh i'm saying stay safe stay healthy stay metal and stay heavy thanks guys